I've been talking to the broadcaster Andy Kershaw, who gave evidence uh, in the Jane Dannett Smith, Smith inquiry and also worked at Radio 1 at the same time as Jimmy Savile. And we started with what he knew. It was essentially, Justin, that in the time I was at Radio 1 and in those years uh, in which I overlapped with Jimmy Savile, which was about five or six years there, there were um, rumours about his enthusiasm for... Uh, sex with underage girls, which were not just persistent, but consistent. Um, what I call a reservoir of, of rumour about him. And one of the first things that happened when I joined Radio 1 in 1985 was that uh, my producer, the great John Walters, who I shared with John Peel, uh, immediately told me to di di keep your distance from Savile. He's a really nasty piece of work. And I told Dame Janet, you know, many of the stories that circulated. Um, and... Uh, I did what I could. The only thing I could do, as somebody who worked on the shop floor at Radio 1 and not in a, a management position, was just to keep me distance from him. Could you have made a formal complaint, though, and said, no. I have heard things that are so outrageous that I yeah. think it, they ought to be followed up by senior management? Well, you see, the problem is, it, it was all hearsay, it was rumour, it was stories, it was reputation. And you can't really go to the police or senior management and say, I've heard that... Jimmy Savile's a child molester, or whatever you wanted to call him, because they'd say, where's your evidence? And that's the point that's, that Dame that Janet... That's the, pr that that that's the, the point problem. that she's making, though, again and again in her report, and this is what so upset the lawyers, but actually when you read what she says, she says again and again, these complaints did not reach management level at the BBC. Well, that's a rather cute conclusion, if I... Well, it's true, isn't that. it? Well, how could people have worked within the BBC... Uh, well, look, let's put it another way... Dame Janet is asking us to believe that people at, at, at a certain level of management at the BBC and above, those in the loftier positions of management, had not heard the persistent and consistent rumours that everybody else who worked in the BBC, those, as I say, on, like, on the shop floor, uh, had heard for years. And not just within the BBC, Justin. You know, the, the Savile rumours uh, were... Uh, uh, Everybody who worked in the wider media as well and the entertainment business had heard the rumours about Jimmy Savile. Mm -hmm. And for anyone to claim that they, that, that they hadn't heard those rumours at the time, um, well, it's a little disingenuous, I think. Do you believe that the culture has changed? And I'm not talking about the culture that allowed Savile to operate. I'm talking about the culture that allows whistleblowing and openness. And I'm thinking particularly of the fact that Liz McKean and Maren Jones, the two journalists on Newsnight who originally broke the story or wanted to break the story of Jimmy Savile, the report of course was dropped, but both of them say they were forced out of the BBC. Do you, do, do, do you think there are still questions about the culture of the organisation? I, I couldn't say really accurately because I'm not in there uh, day in, day out. I'm, you know, I, I, I tend to operate most of the time from home or all over the country. Um, but it's, it was at the time... Um, I thought appalling that the Savile investigation by Newsnight was, was scrapped um, and it had a whiff of senior management still trying to cover their tracks over, over Savile as late as 2012. And it emerged that a conversation was had uh, between the head of news at the time uh, and Mark Thompson, the outgoing director general, and uh, Thompson apparently was horrified to learn of the Newsnight investigation because they had not one, but two tribute programmes to Jimmy Savile in preparation at the time. So instead of scrapping those two tribute programmes, they scrapped Newsnight and hung the editor out to dry and Liz McKean ended up leaving the BBC. Do you, do you think the BBC owes... I mean, Liz McKean and Maren Jones weren't interviewed by Dame Janet. Do, do you think they should have been? Do you, do you, do you think the BBC should now say more about uh, their position? Of, co of course they should have been interviewed by Dame Janet Smith. You know, so it could have been properly explained why that Newsnight Jimmy Savile investigation wasn't screened. Why, why was there still a cover-up going on as late as 2012? I think a lot of it, you know, Justin, probably arose out of embarrassment. They got, them so, they got themselves so far in, in, the, in, in this, um, uh, what might you call it, uh, pretending that there'd been nothing amiss with Savile, um, that they had to keep maintaining that myth. Andy Kershaw, thanks for talking to us.